Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. Career limiting gestures. That's when someone stands up at work or someone works in government or even academia and stands up on principle and takes a stand against those in power and does so knowing it will limit or even perhaps destroy their career. Well, if you do that today, you're supposed to be naive. Well, now joining us, if that's true, is one of the more naive people in America, and his name is Bill Black. Bill was a, is an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white-collar criminologist and a former financial regulator. He's the author of the book, The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. And he's someone who very recently went public with a disinvitation from a, 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 a session being organized by Congress. Hi, Bill. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you. And Bill's in Washington with a little more time on his hands than he expected. Uh, so, Bill, wh what's the story? Well, I was invited to be part of a panel uh, that was supposed to be a bipartisan effort organized in the House to brief members of Congress on financial derivatives. And uh, I accepted the invitation to come to the panel. And when I uh, accepted it, they informed me that I was no longer invited. Um, but of course, we'd already booked the plane and the hotel uh, and such, which is not refundable. So this was a bit startling. And you, you went public with this. You wrote an initial blog where you actually uh, made the email uh, trail uh, public, uh, deleting some of the personal names. And then uh, today, I guess, you released a much longer piece about the importance of career-limiting gestures and the kind of political pressure and toxicity in, in, in Washington now that, that such that you would be disinvited because what you believe was they, they thought you'd be too critical of the banks. So what, what, do you, what, do you, what is your take on why they asked you not to come? Well, what they wrote was that it was fear of bank bashing and uh, a consensus had been reached between the parties on balance and that if I were added to the panel, I would violate that consensus. So, and, and that also used the word fear of um, uh, being confrontational uh, in connection with the bank uh, bashing. Now, to state the obvious, if the problem is so-called balance, if I'm added to the panel, you add somebody else to the panel and you have your balance. Uh, I'm not sure what dimension this is supposedly being balanced on because I'm already balanced. Uh, I've uh, appeared five times before Congress to testify on a range of issues, including before the Senate, on financial derivatives. Three of the times I was named by Democrats, two by Republicans, the two most recent times. You can't get any more balanced than that in, in five uh, invitations, three and two. And I have a whole history over 30 years of, well, you know, for example, I'm known for being the person who blew the whistle on Speaker Wright, one of the most prominent uh, Democrats, for the five uh, senators that uh, we blew the whistle on, who are part of the Keating Five, were Democrats. And I'm a Democrat, but of course, not a terribly political Democrat uh, at all. So I, I, it's hard to believe I would have created any balance issues since. I'm the most balanced person who was invited to the entire panel. So talk a bit about more who's on the panel and what was the panel supposed to be doing, and, and then why wouldn't they want to hear from you? But start with exactly what it was. Well, it's supposed to be a briefing on financial derivatives, and you know it appears that uh, it, this was going to be a first in a series of them, and it appears that this one was prompt by concerns uh, raised by J.P. Morgan's uh, two, now three at least, and growing billion dollar loss on financial derivatives. Uh, the panel uh, consists of people who, you know, I, I think all should be uh, invited. And it does have uh, some uh, very conservative folks from the Cato uh, Institute. It has uh, a representative from the industry. It has a number of other people who worked 
in the industry, but it doesn't have, well, it doesn't have any criminologists, uh, even though I'd say that that's the leading area of expertise you need to understand the role of financial derivatives in the crisis. It doesn't have anyone that actually served as a regulator in the normal sense of the word, that they were out you know, helping to supervise or examine or taking enforcement actions or closing uh, places or suing them. Um, it doesn't have anyone who's ever led uh, a re-regulatory effort, uh, you know, a whole host of things uh, it doesn't have. And I was the obvious person on that panel that was going to provide those perspectives. The thing that really concerns me uh, is not the disinvitation per se, but the, the reason for it uh, of uh, the bank bashing. Uh, because, and, and the idea, I mean, now let's step back for a second. I'm an associate professor at a third-tier university in the flyover states, the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Now, we actually have a superb economic uh, department, but none of those people know that. And the idea that the top members of the industry who make you know, $10 million a year would be uh, too afraid to appear in a session briefing Congress if I was there giving contrary facts I mean, if that's true, then that tells you more than you need to know about why capitalism in America is self-destructed. Because, you know, if they're afraid of me and petrified in their bones about bank bashing, they really can't take on the competition uh, now, among the, the, other bankers the, the, the anywhere e in the world. The email back and forth, which, which you published, uh, one of the emails kind of from this chief of staff of, of the person who was the congressional member who organized all of this. You don't actually mention his name, but I suppose it wouldn't be hard for people to go figure it out. Um, anyway, he, he holds out for you. He says, uh, you know, we, 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 it wouldn't work for this panel, but we're planning another one soon, and we're going to invite you and Michael Greenberger, and we'll be reaching out to you soon. But in the piece you, you wrote as a follow-up, you said this kind of carrot is the way they kind of deal with these things and, and that part of uh, standing up on these issues of principles, you can't kind of be taken in by this kind of carrot. What, what, did, what did you mean? Yeah, that's exactly it. And indeed, he, you know, he called me out this morning uh, to uh, ream me out uh, for a substantial phone call. And that's, you know, that's the job of the chief of staff. Everybody understands that. Uh, but his point was it must be all ego on my part. And to me, it's exactly the opposite. Yeah, the, the ego is precisely the bait. You know, hey, if you play along, uh, you'll get invited uh, to these kinds of things. And as he clear in the phone call today, if you do what I did, you're not going to get invited <laughs> to the Hill uh, to do these kinds of things. And you have to say, I don't care. Uh, you have to be the opposite of the ego in the way he talks about it. Uh, hence the term career-limiting gesture. Hence, hence yet another career-limiting gesture. Um, and I, I would plead guilty to being someone who has committed many CLGs. Now, but you do point out in your article that the Congress person who's, who's organizing all this, you think actually has some intent about reform and has been one of the better people on, on, on the Hill about this. Absolutely, and indeed... Who, who are we mean, talking about? Is, this can't be hard is, to figure out. Well, who's the congressperson we're talking about here? I have... No, I mean, the, my, the reason I didn't name them is it's not about the individuals. Uh, it's not um, about, you know, anything personal. It's about the fact that one of the most progressive members of the Congress is not permitted to have me as a witness because the industry has a veto and the industry has a veto because anybody that criticizes them is potentially falls into this bank bashing category and when we censor as progressives in that fashion when we give in to that there is no real debate anymore 
This is not an insult to any of the members of Congress, to the chief of staff, or to the other panelists who are fine people. But this sends the worst conceivable message, and it does so in the very first of the hearing where you're laying down the de facto rules to these things. Is, is, you, this, is this a, a reflection or a small example of something far more deeper and profound? And, and that is that there's been a kind of tipping point. And, and what I mean by that is if you look back over, you know, at least since the 1930s, if not earlier, a sort of struggle within the economic and financial political elite between those forces who want to say there has to be some control mitigation over the role of finance in society, or it, it, does, it, it spirals the whole economy into deep crisis. And those forces within the elite who simply say, you know, we're worried about how much money we can make this quarter and back the hell off. Is, is there been a kind of tipping point where those forces that are only interested in today and tomorrow's money and après moi la deluge, have they kind of won? And, and, and in a sense that real regulation may not be possible anymore, and, and there needs to be something new. I mean, a whole different kind of politics. To date, they swept the field. To date, they caused the biggest financial crisis in 75 years, in which just the U.S. household sector has lost $11 trillion, where Europe has been utterly devastated where 6 million Americans lost their job, significantly more than that in Europe lost their job, where another 6 million jobs were not created in America that would have been created, again, similar in Europe. And absolutely nothing fundamental has changed. And on top of that, you can't even criticize them for it. If you have a fundamental criticism and say, that the systemically dangerous institutions pose an unacceptable risk to the global economy, that they must be shrunk to the point where they no longer pose such a global risk. If you add to that, look at the last crisis. It was the SDIs, the you know, systemically dangerous institutions, gambling and engaging in fraudulent transactions in financial derivatives that caused the crisis. And we have come out with a proposed rule at this point that would completely gut the Volcker rule and allow the institutions to do exactly the same thing again. I mean, what would it take in America to have a fundamental reform. And of course, it's not just America, it's Europe as well. So yes, uh, if a newly elected president in the United States said what the newly elected uh, chief of state uh, in France said, Hollande, you know, that I have an enemy and its name is finance, uh, we would consider the American president a communist and probably shoot him on sight. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.